Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Miles Sword Podcast. We got a very special one this week. Me and Sammy are back in the studio. Yeah, definitely. We back at it again. Back at it again off the one year, but uh, this week it's a very special one. It's a, another good one. Um, definitely. I, I was probably I'm, I was really excited when uh, Tony told me what we're going to be doing tonight. I was like, oh man, it's going to be real fun. So we got a uh, a not scare actor from Scary Farm. Um, her name is Jackie. And she, how long have you been doing this, the uh, the scary at scary farm for Jackie? This was actually only my second year. Um, last year, or I'm sorry, the 2017 year was my rookie year, and then I was back at it this year. Awesome, awesome. So we got a scare actor. We're gonna get into the mind of a scare actor this week, and we're gonna probably ask her a bunch of different questions as to what it takes to get ready, what is the process of going through, and all that. So I'm very, I'm very excited. Definitely, I'm this super is, stoked. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, get get hands on a on a scare actor and just see how it goes. I've been going for the last like three years, but I've gone off and on and stuff, nice. so I'm very excited to see. She probably scared me. Probably. <laughs> she probably did. She didn't scare me because... Because you didn't go. I'm a scaredy cat. You're a scaredy cat, so that's that's easy. And they and they feed on that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, we love it. Yeah, see? There you go. Oh. We can't get enough. The more you scream, the harder we go. Yeah, see? It's like... Uh, Dang! Now, now I don't know. Do I really want to go this year? Now oh, you're going. <laughs> you want to go? Look at that. I'm gonna personally text her to find us to scare you. Now, go. Done and done. There you go. So, Jackie, thank you for coming on to the show today. Uh, we thank you are for very me. much. We're we're very excited. Um, I wrote up some questions last night that I just want to kind of get a behind the scenes look of what it takes to become a scare actor. Um, uh, just the nerves going in and stuff like that. So uh, here we go with the first question. And I, I had told her before, um, just answer the best you can. She's not allowed to answer anything that you know conf- confidential. That they you know they tell them to keep confident or uh, confidential and stuff like that. It's perfectly okay. I get it. I mean, there's stuff that they want to keep their secrets, and, and it's okay. But um, we're gonna ask her what we can, and it's gonna be fun. So, yeah, definitely. The first uh, question I want to ask is, uh, what is the interview process like for Not Scary Farm? So it's pretty easy. If I start at the very beginning, um, they'll send out, you know, something from their website. It'll say, we're looking for scare actors. And you just apply. Like, all, you literally just fill it out. You don't have to have necessarily any experience. They'll train you there. Um, but the actual interview, like, when you go in, you set your audition day, you go in, um, the first thing they do is they ask you, like, really simple, fairly, like, common sense questions that pertain mostly to safety and security. Um, so I can't, I don't know if I'm necessarily allowed to tell you what exactly they ask, but for all intents and purposes, if you say, you know, for certain situations, you utilize your, your lead team or security properly, you're fine. It's really easy. And then after that, you do your audition. And after that, you do a ton of paperwork. You're going to be there all day, bring water, and then you go to costuming and that's pretty much it. Honestly, the hardest part is the audition. The audition, yeah. So I've, yeah. I, they, I've seen on YouTube some auditions of uh, mm-hmm. certain stuff they go through. Uh, I know they tell you to do a bunch of different characters and stuff like yes. that, and then they do group activities as well, uh, one by one. Um, was that kind of nerve wracking to you? Did you kind of go into that like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to do this, or were you kind of really confident when you went in? Were you like, I, I got this, is no problem for me? So I have a small theater background. Um, oh, I did nice. theater in high school, so hey. it wasn't super bad. Like, of course, you're going into a new situation. You have no idea what they're going to ask you to do in the first year, because um, I actually didn't have to audition this year. So the first year I did it. Um, you could. We were lined up outside of Paranormal Inc. and they were doing the auditions inside the main showroom, like before you actually get separated into the maze. 
And all you hear is just people screaming and hitting the walls. And it's like 98 degrees outside. And you're like, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? (laughs) And then they call your name. And there's just a panel of people standing there. And the year that I auditioned, John Cook was standing there. I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) I thought I was so ready for this. And now I'm starting to feel, you know, you feel you naturally, I think, should feel a little bit nervous. Yeah, I mean, that's going to give you some adrenaline. Definitely. I think if you're not nervous, you don't care. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and yeah, right. You you need to care because this is something that all of us enjoy doing, and we put blood, sweat, and tears into it. So yeah, the nerves are there, and you're standing in front of people that have done this for years. And so honestly, for my audition, they asked us to do a clown and a werewolf and a zombie, and I think that was it. And my group, I want to say, it was fairly tame because I felt like I was one of the only ones running around trying to use as much space as possible which they want to see when you audition you want to go in there just unleash hell on them like you can't touch the people that are around you and you can't touch the people that are critiquing you but utilize the space you don't just want to stand there and growl that's not going to cut it use as much body movement and your facial expressions as you can and I went in there and I just I almost felt like I lost my mind like it was an out of body experience because I felt dizzy afterwards because I went so hard I felt dizzy so I feel like the nerves in that sense helped yeah um, I've seen a lot of stuff on YouTube they tell you to do a variety of stuff Um, yeah they they give you different uh, like you said you got the clown and the werewolf and I I think I've heard something similar to that Uh, and and it just looks like it's a it's a little nerve-wracking but at the same time, you got to get into that character and just kind of do what you got to do. Yeah, um, and standing on the outside listening to it, it sounds like people are being murdered. <laughs> it's it's crazy. <laughs> that's what that's what you yeah. When you just said that right now, I was like, oh, that kind of gives it the hot feeling. That sounds yeah. like yeah, it's Halloween season. Let's do this. Yeah, totally, totally. So yeah, that that sounds that sounds pretty uh, pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, so Sammy. Yeah, I think I think like, one of my questions is like, what what made you like decide? You know what? I'm gonna apply this year. Like, what made you want to? What like really inspired you to become a scare actor? Oh my God, I've wanted to do this for so long. <laughs> I, honestly, I've been wanting to do this for like the past decade, and oh, wow. the stars just happened to line up perfectly, and my schedule lined up perfectly, so I just did it. And it was honestly a shot in the dark. I had no idea what to expect, and it it really just worked out, and it's been awesome. I I absolutely love it. I have no intention of stopping anytime soon, so we'll see where this goes. That's something I've always wanted to do, too, and then just when I got this job, it's like, it didn't work out. Definitely. I think, yeah, yeah, the stars have to align. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But I do respect every scare actor I go, like, whether it's Scary Farm, Halloween Horror Nights, anywhere I go to, it's like, they always put on such an amazing show. I'm always walking out impressed. Um, uh, so thank I thank you. you guys for that because you guys actually make bring the the terror to life, and and it just as a horror fanatic like myself, it, it just makes the whole experience like ten times better. So awesome! Uh, well, thank awesome you, you guys to do. Um, so you said you did it uh, in 2017 as well, right? Yes, that was right. Okay, so 2017, and then you did it this past year in 2018, right? Yes. So what were the uh, for 2017? What was the first thing you uh, you worked in as far as as mazes? Did you go straight to a, a maze? I mean, I know. Um, a lot of people come in wanting to do scare zones and stuff, but they always put them in mazes to kind of break them in for a little bit. Um, so, I mean, it it, it kind of depends on how you audition. Like, if you nail your audition, there's a chance you're going to go out to streets your first year. I wouldn't count on it because it, it you really do kind of need to know how the, the beast of this event functions. So don't be discouraged if they put you in a maze because it's just going to help you in the long run. But during my audition, uh, like I said, I had like an out-of-body experience. I don't remember a lot of it. But when we were done, John Cook pulled me aside after everyone else left. And he asked me personally to be a squad leader and infected. Nice. And honestly, I I kind of turned him down the first time. I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. I want to be scary. And he goes, I really, really want you to be a squad leader. Like he, I'm not going to say he begged because he didn't. He gave me the choice. But... I wasn't about to say no to John Cook, like the industry leader in Haunt. So I took it. I, and I have a military background to begin with. I don't know if that helped because I was probably really loud. Like I said, I don't really remember. But 
and that's you know that's how I got my first maze, and that's I did the same thing this year. So yeah, uh, you, you you bring up John Cook, and he, that guy is a legend. He has made not scary Bob. I think last year he transitioned to Dark Harbor. Oh, yeah, did he? he was kind of like half and half. We yeah. saw him a bunch, of, like a lot through the the run because he did um, the depths. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a fantastic. Yeah. Run, by the way, it was that your favorite maze, right? That was my favorite maze of the event last year. I love the just scenic and 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 walking in each room. The creatures looked amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I love that was one of my favorite mazes, and I, it doesn't help that I'm a huge sci-fi fan. So seeing <laughs> that stuff come to life, like it was just awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, special ops is one of my, another one of my favorite mazes because uh, me personally, I love um, action movies. I play video games, so like uh, nice. when I'm thinking of this, when I'm thinking of the special ops, immediately comes to mind is the zombies mode in Call of Duty. Yep, yep. Uh, which that's, that's I think, what it was based off of, I believe. Like that was the inspiration behind doing Infected. Yeah, and I, I am so mad because the one year they, the first year they started, uh, I didn't get to go, but they did all of Camp Snoop. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, and then uh, it was this, intense. It yeah. was crazy. That looked really fun. But um, what they've done in the last couple years in the with uh, well, the mystery lodge area, it, I like it a lot too because it's like you you see like a, a a helicopter that's just it's right there. It's kind of like mm-hmm. it like like a crash or something. Oh wow! The city's all run down and stuff like that. But I straight I I in that in that maze I I take that maze like serious. <laughs> like I'm I'm ducky and I'm. I'm doing a lot of stuff, and you know, it, it's it's a really fun maze though, and I really enjoy it and stuff like that. Um, so, have you been at Special Ops the the last two years then, or did you yep, change that's around? Been, that's been my spot. I've been a squad leader, yelling and screaming and getting tackled and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's an amazing maze, and and you guys really bring that to life with the whole, uh, um, you know, as as military people, I, I think it, it really brings it to life. I think one year too. Cause I did work at Knotts before. I have worked at Knotts before as a, as a in the park as a p- park services, okay. and I did get to do. I get to experience a haunt one year, and um, one year actually when Walking Dead just featured Negan, someone brought a barbed wire baseball bat. Oh wow! As a prop. I know him. Yeah, and I thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I'm like, wow, he's really taking this to the next level. And That's it, really cool. Negan just came in. I was like, That's so badass. <clears throat> yep. So, um, yeah, Infected is a is insane. Like I, I know a lot of people don't like it because it's not necessarily scary to them. It's yeah. more of a an, an interactive adventure, and I respect that. But Infected is just absolutely insane. Oh man, I mean, I was clocking, I want to say up to thirteen to fourteen miles a night. Wow. Oh wow! Yeah. How do you how do you prepare for that? Like getting into obviously that's a lot of work every night. Yes, it is. It's a lot of work. In our, you know, my my rig that I was wearing weighed, I want to say twenty pounds with everything on it. Yeah, it 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 can get rough and it can get really hard and you get tired and you just got to find a way to push through it. And honestly, it's the people that you work with that make it worthwhile. Definitely, I, I think yeah. Obviously. If you have the whole team going in and willing to give all of their all, you know, into that blood, sweat, and tears, I think that'll make, you know, when you're, you know, hitting one in the morning, like, dying, yeah. but you're like, you know what, everyone else is pushing, so let me push through to get these last couple people through, you know? And that's Absolutely. super cool. Absolutely. Your your crew makes or breaks, like, how your night's going to go. And for very fortunately, um, particularly this year, I was out on uh, the very beginning, Alpha Streets, was one of the first squad leaders that you would see when you actually got into the maze. Um, the crew that I was working with was awesome. They made it so much fun. And I, I always tell people, a uh, little bit of a sidetrack here, that there's the show that the guest sees, which is probably what you guys saw. You know, the zombies are coming at you. You're shooting them. They're taking shots. And squad leaders are yelling at you to run through and get to the source and destroy it. And then, yeah. there's, then there's the show that actually happens, which is the one that the guest doesn't see. And that's us coming up with these weird things to try to do to get a better scare or to make it a better experience or, you know, messing around sometimes in the back. Yeah. No, I've actually, uh, lucky enough, gotten to see both sides of that show um, because, when, like I said, I worked at Knott's the one year, and when I would take my breaks and stuff, I would actually talk to a couple of the scare actors and stuff like that, and I would do many interviews with them, like just talk about their mindsets and stuff like that or what they're a game plan is for the night and a lot of them were really cool and they would you know tell me like this is what we've been doing and this is how it's been going and stuff like that and 
uh, it was really cool to uh, to really talk to a lot of these scare actors in the past and just kind of see uh, what their mindset was and they just look tired and and just you know a lot of them are wearing their they take off their mask and they're just sweating and they're yep. downing water mm -hmm. and, and it's just it's insane a lot with what they go through but in the end of the day they do it for a good scare and they do it to put on a freaking amazing show so absolutely definitely absolutely. we uh, we put our bodies on the line so if one person walks out of there and they were entertained or they were scared or they had a good time it makes it worth it i'm sure um do you have like a dream maze or like a dream character that you'd like to be a part of I do have a dream character, and I don't know if I want to talk about it because I'm gonna try to audition it this year. There you go. All right, perfect. No I worries. Like, I like the mystery. I like that. <laughs> it, I I think this character would work in either the Hollow or Ghost Town, which is a goal for me to try to get onto this year. But we'll see what happens. I mean, auditions. When you really think about it, they're not that far away. So. I, I hope to have good news, you know, next time we meet or talk or... Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. Definitely. We'll be hoping for the best for that. Yep, yep. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, As far as... Uh, so you've been working special ops, and that's, that's really cool. Do you have, you have any favorite moments for uh, special ops that just, like, you that hit you? You're like, this is badass, or this is fun, or... I have two. I have two really good moments, and I I'm so glad that I get to answer this question because... Not a lot of people got to see it. This was kind of a, a one group thing. So our first one was it was towards the end of the night and our zombies are tired. I'm tired. We're just like, we got to figure out a way to make this fun. So on Alpha Streets, there were three porter potties. And there was one that was right by uh, Mama Pasta's, which was our pizzeria. Mm -hmm. So you could see it from Mama Pasta's or you could see it from where I was standing on the street. And I think we got... Oh, I want to say 10 zombies inside one porter potty. Whoa. <laughs> I, I knew it was going to happen, too. I, you know, they're looking at me like, we're going to do it. And I'm like, okay, go ahead, guys, do it. It's going to be fun. So I run up to the front, and there's no one on the street. All you hear is the sound effects, and every all the guests are looking. They're like, where is everybody? And I'm like, I don't know. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So I'm running them through knowing that at any second this door is going to bust open. And it did <laughs> in front of a group of girls. And it got them so good because there were 10 zombies that came out after them and chased them all the way back down the street. And normally, I, I you know, you don't want to do that. You want to scare them with the flow of the maze, but it was so worth it. Oh, oh it was yeah. so great. So I call that my porta potty bomb. It was one of the best moments. And then the second one, the very beginning of the night, I want to say it was the fourth week. You know, everyone's in their groove. Things are going really well. It's dark out right when you start to. So it's like, you know, it's awesome. And my two zombies that were on the street at the time, they didn't even know they did it. They scared a girl so bad her pants came off. Nice. What? Yeah, oh, my gosh. She like, jumped so high, and her pants just fell on the floor. Nice. <laughs> and she kept running. And, I and she like, kept running. Wow. Like, did you guys see that? Like, you literally scared the pants off of somebody. They're like, no, we didn't see it. It was great. It was one of the funniest moments. Like, she was fine. Everyone was good. Like, it wasn't anything that wasn't, like... You know, it wasn't more than you would see on a bathing suit or anything like that. But they literally scared the pants off of somebody. <laughs> That's hilarious. Awesome. It wasn't even my scare. It was theirs. And I got to witness the whole thing. <laughs> so following up that question, there's always going to be the least favorite moment. And that probably sometimes has to do with uh, either a guest being stupid or, or you know, I, I've seen it firsthand of guests trying to be stupid and, and you know, messing with the scare actors, thinking they're tough and all that. Um <laughs> you have any least favorite moments that happened to you in the maze? Uh, I think that would go back to another two things. The first one is everyone gets hot plague. Everyone gets sick. And it is the worst. It sucks trying to scare someone and you're hocking back snot the entire time. You're, you can't breathe. Or if you know if you have a cold and you're trying to run and you're trying to like be in character and you just feel like crap. That sucks. You know, there's no way around it that, you know, just getting sick in general is the worst. But um, we always call it 1130 to 12 o'clock excuse me, the witching hour at Haunt because that's when they do last call for alcohol. Yeah. Uh, and in my opinion, you shouldn't be serving alcohol in an event like this. Oh, yeah, and I, I totally agree. You know, for infected, and it just, they can, the guests can get wild. And we know that going in and being a squad leader, you know, we have weapons that are all, you know, airsoft lookalikes, and I had a tomahawk and a knife. So people listen to us a little bit better because we look pretty intimidating. Yeah. 
but people getting in, you know, my crew's face or shoving them or hitting them, uh, you know, we had a couple people bleed. Oh that wow, stuff sucks. Wow. You know, and yeah, I've had I've had people run full on into me, shoulder check. I get knocked to the ground because they're just drunk and not paying attention and flailing their gun everywhere. You know, stuff like that sucks. Oh, man, yeah, that's that, that, that sounds not like the worst. Well, guess you know that's one two a night. That's usually not the worst thing in the world. Most people that have come through that are intoxicated are just having a good time. And you can tell, you know, they're just like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And they, yeah. they might sway your swagger a little bit. You know to stay away from them. But it's the people that like will hold a zombie down and put the gun up to their head. That's not cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, I got to go over there and try to, you know, rescue my actually human friend. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just a scare actor, you yeah. know. No, no and, and that's, that's why I think uh, that, that's why I'm glad they have rules for these events too and stuff like that. Because going in, a lot of people do know, um, and they 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 do put it in bold and they do they do emphasize a lot. Do not touch the characters; they won't touch you. Their job is to just scare you. Yeah, it's a full blown warning before going to any of these events. And um, usually, if a scare actor scares me, I just always tell them like, "Oh my God, you actually got me. That's pretty good." Yeah, um, and stuff like that. And I always just give them props. Um, or I'll react like I actually get scared because I probably actually got scared. Yeah. Um, that's but... the best that we can get to. If, if you scream and run away, <laughs> we did our job. You yeah. know, <laughs> if you turn around, you're like, dude, that was really good. <laughs> also, but you don't need to get crazy. Um, you know, people... and, and some <laughs> of the moments I've had with scare actors in the past, like either them being like really cool um, after they scared me, or like if they wanted, because I'm I'm a tall guy, so some of them will sneak up behind me. Just so I can sneak up on someone else, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and I've seen that done in the past. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do see where uh, you get people. I'm glad you uh, haven't gotten hurt yourself yet. I mean, I know there's some stupid people out there. Uh, I've gotten punched. Oh, have you gotten punched? Oh, yeah. I've taken a couple guns to the face. I've gotten punched. I've had a, you know, a slight black eye. And some of those were accidents. You know, some of those are honest accidents. You know, someone turns around super fast. They don't know you're there. Yeah. Some of them were not accidents. Oh. And, <laughs> but nothing that has sent me to the hospital, nothing that has made me go to first aid. You know, you just go, eh, they're stupid. You call your lead. They go take care of it. The black eye must uh, help with character, though. I mean... You know, sometimes a little bit of blood doesn't hurt. You know, yeah, right? there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it doesn't hurt your look too much. Um, you know, another good question I think here is, um, obviously you're a professional um, and you want to stay in character all the time, but has there ever been an occurrence where someone like made you break character? And if so, like, what did they do? It wasn't necessarily a guess that made me break character. It was my zombies acting a fool. <laughs> uh, this year uh, on the street we had... Um, couple cones like really big traffic cones and while i was waiting for the group my back was turned to them i didn't see what they were doing two of them got underneath the cones and started chasing me and (laughs) i have ever laughed that i couldn't stop laughing it was bad i had to take the scarf that i was wearing and wrap it around my face because there was probably five or six groups where i could not i could not get it i was so hard i was crying so th- it was more the antics that they were doing or a situation that would happen where you get, you know, a really wild guest that was acting a fool and, you know, doing something funny and then you start laughing afterwards. It's stuff like that, but never really a guest directly to me that has made me break character. It is always the people I work with. <laughs> those are always, I think those are always the best ones, too, because you, you, oh, yeah. do, you do know them and you get along with them. And it's something to talk about after you do your shift or during lunch or something. It's just like, dude, really? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. The the two girls that I was with got underneath those traffic cones and just started scooting along, and started chasing. And it was hysterical. It was something out of a comedy. Um, I know uh, from previous uh, and mm-hmm. and people I've talked to, they are really fond there of giving everybody a haunt nickname. Have you received yours yet? I have a few. <laughs> a few, okay. Um, the very first, I want to say like the first half of the run, my, my rookie year, uh, I had a patch on my back that said whiskey tango foxtrot. Um, <laughs> you know, cause you're a squad leader, you can put certain patches and stuff on our rig just to make it more fun. Yeah. And one of the guys just started calling me whiskey. It was never like an official name, but it's the one I have on the Jersey that I'm wearing right now. Awesome. I'm wearing my Jersey. 
Um, the second one was during strike of my rookie year. So, you know, uh, some of us get hired on to help uh, take down the mazes or take down lighting and get ready for the Christmas season. And he found out that I was half Korean and he started calling me half breed, nice. which I really liked that name. That was a really cool name. And he was a ghost town monster. And then this year I got mush pot because my zombies like to steal my gear whenever and I, I have a you know a tomahawk and a knife and a couple uh, pistols on me and my knife was always in a spot that it was never really tied down so I could you know grab it really easy and do a you know a quick kill or something yeah that knife was hardly on my rig they <laughs> for me, so it was kind of like I was always the loser so I got mush pot okay that, okay I can see that yeah um, <laughs> the most famous uh, one I've known so far, as far as uh, scare actors go, uh, and I watch him on YouTube is Arc Dracula. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only one I've seen other than you two. Um, but yeah, I see a lot of these scare actors even when I was working there, and they would just make me laugh. Uh, yeah, just it's get good... a lot of antics. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, what what do you do to prepare yourself as as a scare actor? Like, do you do you uh, when, to get really into the mood? What do you do? Do you listen to music? Do you uh, do you, you know pump each other up? What, what's the what's the what's the preparation like to get pumped up for the event? So, I would even say this starts now, like off season. The way that I like really get prepared is by staying in some type of physical shape because this event takes everything out of you. Like if you aren't ready to run and crawl and jump and be able to do that for eight hours straight. Or, you know, like I said, I was clocking 13, 14 miles a night. If you can't do that, you're not going to be, you're not going to be able to deliver the scare that you want to, or develop the character that you know you can. So I say preparation starts now, go out on a run, go out on a walk, make sure you can stand for eight hours. But as for like the day of like before each night, you know, I, I will listen to music, but honestly, like as soon as the the maze music turned on, it was like you were just talking to a different person. <laughs> because you know, you got you got bullets, you know, bullet sounds, you've got heavy metal, you know, John Cook sounding just crazy music, and you've got all these different sound effects, you got the fog going off. For me, being in that type of environment, that's what that's where I'm just like, all right, here we go. Here yeah, the heavy metal alone would just get me pumped because I'm a huge metal punk guy, and that would that alone would just get me going. Like, I'm like, I'm ready For to sure. do this. Let's do this. And it's on. I want to say it's on like a three minute loop. So, you know, you're sitting there with your other squad leaders, or your zombies, and you're like stretching out. You're making sure that all your weapons are ready to go. You know, any last minute things that you guys want to try tonight, and then you start. And after a couple groups, you find your groove, and you just go. You go hard all night long. Definitely, this is a bit of an off-topic question, but you know, I think it's something we should probably start asking everyone that gets to join us on the podcast. Uh, like, what is your favorite horror movie? Mm, favorite horror movie? Fun fact: I don't really like horror movies. Oh, huh. really? I, I love Halloween. I love that feeling of you know being scared, but I'm not really a big horror movie fan. If honestly, if I had to choose, it would be Krampus. I don't Krampus know. is good. This, I, I honestly, I think that's one of my favorite ones, just because it's so silly. But the creature design in it is incredible. It's yeah. super good. Yeah, uh, and if you love Krampus, I'm pretty sure you saw it too. Trick or treat. Trick or treat's pretty good. It took me a while to like really appreciate that movie because I I went in thinking it was going to be one story, <clears throat> not realizing it was going to be like five different stories that ends up into one. But man, Sam's cool. I love yeah. Sam. Sam's He's Sam's bad. Um, He's rad. Another off-topic question, but if you did like those two, did you go to the? Do you so? Do you attend other haunts? Uh, oh, do you, absolutely. Do you check them out? So, did you go to the years of Halloween Horror Nights when they did uh, Krampus and Trick or Treat? So the year that they did Krampus, I feel was one of the best years that Horror Nights had. I think that was what 2016, right? Yes, I, I think agree it was with you then. And horror that Horror Nights was awesome. I have opinions about this past year. I did not like it at all. I thought it was horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, this past year was it was okay. It wasn't the best, but I, I agree with you. Twenty sixteen so far has been my all time favorite. I mean, yeah, you had the Exorcist. You had 
um, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, the 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 big four. You know, Freddy versus yeah. Jason, Leatherface. Kind of like the Titans of Terror and everything. And yeah. and don't get me wrong, like I think Horror Nights is cool, and I I understand that they have to work within their intellectual properties, and I respect that. Um, and I do respect the fact that every year they take all those mazes down and they build up. But this year there were so many black walls. And it was just, I couldn't overlook that. And Welcome to the world of uh, black walls of Universal. That's <laughs> yeah. just, that's, that's a sign of uh, we were running low on budget. So let's see what yeah. we can do. <laughs> I didn't like it, to be honest with you. My, my brother, who uh, is one of the co-hosts on the channel that I run uh, with my wife, he he loves Universal so much, and he was trying so hard to just be like, no, it's good, it's good. They just, you know, they have to have transitions, and I'm like, no, they don't. They don't have to have transitions. <laughs> uh, what what Mace did I love this year? Universal's Monsters, was... I thought was absolutely stellar. It yep. was super good. It was awesome. The black walls that they had were used correctly. Mm-hmm. But then you, wow, what was it? What was the other maze? Um, the Blumhouse maze. Oh. God, don't even get me started on oh. that. The purge, <laughs> purge, Blumhouse. Purge yeah, the Blumhouse but, will just do that to you. Blumhouse, they, they've done those mazes two years in a row. The first one was okay, um, but the second one, I was just, this is horrible. Um, the first Purge the first purge was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I'll give it that. Um, another, I think another maze for me, at least, with uh, the right uses of black walls, and that's because it's it's really hard to accomplish. But I think Poltergeist kind of worked with the Black Wolves. You know, I really like Poltergeist, and I don't necessarily know if it was because of what the maze was. It was because of the effects that they had inside of it. Yeah. Like, the meat going across the uh, the counter was disgusting. Yeah. So that was really cool. The animatronic that they had of the, the monster was rad. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I've been to, you know, LA Haunted Hayride many, many times, and when they do use their animatronics... It's awesome. I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a sucker for practical effects, so. No, practical is the way to go, in my opinion. I love practical effects. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's why I think I, I, as far as maze quality goes, Knots doesn't disappoint. You're always seeing something every step of the way. Absolutely. There's not one point where I was like, there's a black wall transition. There was like everything they try to fill with a scene of some sort yeah, yeah something what's, what's blood on the wall or there's something to look at yeah um and that's why i think this year this last year was probably my favorite year thus far um because i did love the depths i did love um what was the alien one that they did last year the alien one they did an alien one this year uh what is it called dark entities dark entities was it was great Dark Entities, like, put me in some of my favorite sci- It was, like, honestly, a mixture of, um, of Alien with, uh, I, I mixed it with another movie, but it, it was just awesome, dude. I felt like I was in an Alien movie. See, I'm glad you liked it, because a lot of our guests were saying that they, that Dark Entities was on their, on their lowest end, and then the other half was saying that it was the best one, so there was literally a- line down the middle divide with dark entity so i'm glad to hear that you guys liked it because i know a lot of them in there they were working their butts off trying to bring their a game no yeah and um i think the only mazes i didn't hit this past year was um paranormal ink and um trick or treat but in Mm -hmm. the past i have done that and i know they try to do uh, they do mix up the scares every year so it's not the same thing Um, yes but in the past i have done that and i think both of them are good um, the only thing I, I would be able to, if I, if I had a, if I had some creative control to change with Paranormal Inc. was instead of doing the same episode, um, to jump on, let's do a different episode a year because yeah. they, can, they can keep the property Paranormal Inc. And I think it's a fantastic idea, but let's make it a different episode a year. They're at different, uh, different, uh, paranormal locations and stuff. Yeah, for um, sure. That's, that's not a half bad idea. And I'm not going to lie. The first year that Paranormal came out, best maze I've ever seen in my life. Yeah absolutely the best maze but i do feel like it's starting to age just a little bit because it is a little repetitive so like i'm saying though they can keep the idea of paranormal i think it's a fantastic idea idea. let's just let's move locations instead of oh for sure yeah instead of an asylum this year let's let's do like a a haunted house or something you know or something else you know absolutely they can they can really franchise that kind of whole thing and stuff like that Um, yeah so with that being said do you have any advice for newcomers? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, we were all new at one point, 
And I know that it may not seem like that. You know, you've got iconic characters that are out on Ghost Town. You've got people that have been doing this for 20 plus years. I know it seems like like they weren't ever new, but they were. So go in as open-minded as possible. You know, if you want to be on Ghost Town and you want to be a slider, work for it. You have to earn that spot. You have to prove that you are ready to be out there with the elite on streets. You know, so if you get put into a maze, don't pout about it. You know, make the best of your situation, develop a badass character and run with it and learn and ask questions. Honestly, like a lot of the people that you're going to see, they're surprisingly really, really kind and friendly and are willing to talk to you and help you develop characters and give you different tactics that have worked for them. And maybe they're going to work for you in this May spot or this new street spot that you got no idea what you're doing. You know, listen to the people that have done it, listen to their advice, see what they do, figure out what works for you and put that into your character and just be an animal, be an absolute beast. Yeah. Speaking on that, what is the, uh, what is the best advice, uh, you know, a veteran has given to you? Drink water. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not even kidding. We have so many people drop that are just dehydrated. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine because a lot of people are behind uh, makeup or masks and stuff yep. like that, and that can get hot, especially if you're going eight hours. You know that. Yep. You're gonna need water. That's definitely. And that was the thing I saw um, working at Knots as a park services when I'd go to the break rooms and stuff like that. There was just jugs and jugs of ice water everywhere. Yep. And um, use it. Don't don't drink soda. Don't eat like crap. Drink water. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it will make or break your night. And I, if I can get almost a little bit personal here, I'm I'm pretty athletic. This year I lost 35 pounds because of Haunt. Like that is how physical it is. If You've got to keep yourself healthy and yeah. just drink water. Don't drink soda. Don't do any of the other stuff. Just drink water. Yeah, it water. Will, it will break your – it will make or break your night if you don't. Water, yeah, that's important. I, that's all I <laughs> Yeah. So. But I mean, in terms of scare tactics, honestly, it, it was whatever works for your character in the situation and the environment that you're in. Use that environment. Use the people that you're working around. Uh, that's what my cast lead helped me out with this year because I, I felt like I was doing the same thing over and over and over again. I told him I'm getting bored. I need to do something different. So we worked with a couple things. We worked with some zombies and we came up with some really cool routines and it, it worked out great. So ask for help. Other wow. than drink water, just ask for help. Yeah, I I think helps a big thing, too. Um, And that's going to bring me to the uh, last and final question to wrap up the interview. This went by too fast. Yeah, this was fun. This was fun. Um, So, overall, though, how has this experience uh, impacted you over uh, your two years as a scare actor? And is there any tips and tricks you picked up as you went and kind of Frankensteined yourself to make them more you? Uh, Yeah, honestly, for me, because it was important to me, was developing some kind of character because as a squad leader you know you're you're technically in a lead type role you know you're you're talking to guests you're making very direct interactions with them you're developing a relationship with them because you're humanizing the zombie apocalypse so to me it was very important because you're not getting a lot of scares you're doing a more acting and improv was to develop a character so in order for me to do that, you know, I got together with some of my zombies and I said, we need to make a story. That way my interactions with you are going to change or be the same based on the groups that come through. So um, two of my, my zombies that I had, Alicia and Marcus, who I absolutely love to death, they did an incredible job. This was their rookie year and you wouldn't even know it. That's how, that's how well they did. Uh, we decided to make them my little brother and sister. And I was trying to protect them, and one of them ended up biting me, and I started turning into a zombie as the event progressed. So every single night, I'd get a little more feral, or I'd snap at you, or something would happen where I'd, I'd twitch, and a guest would look at me, and they go, are you infected? And I'm like, I don't know, man. And the final nights, I had a bloody rag on my on my arm, so it looked like I was I was in a lot of trouble. So oh, wow. that would be yeah. that would be something that's really cool. Really develop a character. Because if you do that, you can start playing. You can really start getting into it. You can, you know, change it up a little bit every single night, or you can progress a certain story that you're trying to tell. Because you do have people that come in every single night, six times in a row. You're telling a story to that person, and they're going to see it. 
Yeah, I really like that you shared that with us because uh, that's really cool. It's the little stuff that um, cause I do. I do know that Knotts does offer a season pass for their for their haunt every year. So it's something as a guest, if you were to go into that maze every day or you know every day that the haunt's open, and you were to look at Jackie's character, for example, and she said that you know she's starting to turn into a zombie each night. She gets more and more, and by the end of the night, she has a bloody thing, a bloody scarf on her. You know, and it's stuff like that, the interaction with uh, the characters and the guests that I love the most um, because it really brings the situation or uh, scare to life to me, and it brings a lot of uh, the iconic fears and, 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 uh, and scares to life. Uh, just it makes it, it makes the whole experience better to me. Um, oh, absolutely, yeah. And when we're able to put our own touches on it, it makes it more visceral and it makes it feel more real. And we can do a, a better job entertaining you and scaring you when we're allowed to do that. And I think that at Knotts, we're very blessed to have certain freedoms to be able to do that. You know, we're not necessarily stuck to a property where we have to act a certain way. You know, we can we can make our own characters and we can run with it and we can be absolutely wild and feral and a beast mode every single night. And it's awesome. I, I love it. I love every second of it. So you heard it here from Jackie. Being a scare actor was one of the things she's always wanted to do, and look at her, she is, she's doing it, she's having a fun time doing it. Jackie, That's of course, best one, thing in the world. Yeah, of course, one third of the Fractured Compass Productions channel. Uh, link is in the description below. Go check them out if you already haven't. Uh, subscribe, check out their videos, their content. They make really good stuff. Um, it was them, I think. I think over social media we uh, we connected, and then I started watching yeah. their stuff, and then. I did. I think I started talking to. Was it you, Jackie, that I was talking to, right? Yes. If you're if you're on our channel, it will be me talking to you. I do a lot of the the behind the scenes. I do all the camera work and the editing. So if you ever comments on anything, you're on Twitter. You're talking to me. So you're talking to Jackie. If you're <laughs> running into their social media, uh, definitely go check them out. Uh, their channel is live now. Link in the description below. Um, I want to thank Jackie for coming on the podcast and sharing Whoa. a little insight of what it takes to become a scare actor, some fun moments, um, just the, hopefully her future at Not Scary Farm. Um, uh, thank you very much, and you are welcome back on the podcast anytime. Oh, thank, thank you, you, guys. It's, it's been an absolute honor. This was fun. I would, I would love to do this again anytime. And, you know, my, my other half is also a squad leader. She could probably provide you a completely different insight to what I've told you because awesome. everyone's, everyone's experience is completely individual. Yeah, for sure. We would love to uh, to have your other half on the uh, on the show. So whenever you guys want to come on, uh, just let us know. Uh, we'll set yes. up one of the days. Of course, yes. me and Sammy are – at least I know for sure I am. Are you going to be attending that scary time? You know, actually, you know what, Jackie? I want to I thank you so much. Um, I, I think I'm pumped. Like, I'm in February. I know it's February, but I'm like, when's September? When's October? Cause yes! I think I'm going to have to come out and get scared. Yeah, yeah. So you heard it here, guys. The Knights of Horror will be at um, at Not Scary Farm this year. Um, we'll be waiting for you. And definitely, <laughs> definitely we're going to have to get in contact with Jackie to let her know what night we're coming. That way she can get prepared. Oh, I'll find you. Don't worry. She'll find us. She'll do it. <laughs> I'm going to hide in the bathroom, I think. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's the worst because they're going to wait for you, dude. Just wait. I've seen it happen firsthand. It's your service. Patient when we find a target. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Again, thank you. A very special thank you to Jackie for coming on the show for sharing her experience as a haunt uh, uh, actor, and look forward to the future uh, having you on the podcast more and talking a little bit more about your experiences. Uh, maybe we'll try to make it like a year of the thing where we have Ron tell her how her 2019 experience was, how her 20. Hell yeah, was. guys! Hell yeah, this was awesome. Thank you so much. For, look, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, this was awesome. Awesome. I hope we can, uh, whatever we can do to kind of spread the word out there to join the Not Scary Farm team. Um, thank you very much to everyone who's listening, and um, we will see you guys next week. Uh, later. Bye-bye.